Steady. Steady. Up. Oh. Sheep. Here's something I didn't really expect to find. There's a ewe and a lamb on the middle of this track here. Very noisy. We got some of the cows into the shed. We've got some playing dumb up there in the field. But it's day two of getting the bulls in. Phil has managed to get the bull in. On his own, me and John have been up the road setting up the gate. But we also want to move the rest of the cows. And uh, there's four out in the field that haven't wanted to come in. Update, it's not going to plan. One cow is right up the top edge with John. And one sort of settled here with her calf. But that cow just wants to go the complete opposite way to wherever we wanted to. We've tried calling her like we normally do. We try not to get in the field and drive them because this happens. But she is just being an absolute pig. What we need to do is get them all together, really. Try and get them against the hedge and run them along the hedge and straight in the gate. Right, well, we eventually got the cows in. Had to tire them out a bit first. We're on the pool. Big sir. down to start with so that hopefully they all come out of the shed and out of the yard. Craig's blocking the road ahead of me so I know there's no traffic in front. Field's behind them. John's in the field other side of that hedge. We had a drash on. Look at that. Keen. Keen for some new grass. Now uh, this is how you block a gap properly. Use a tractor. I've left the gate open behind, in case it all goes wrong, then that field there is ours, but hopefully they'll skittle on past. They've got the truck up their backside now, behind them. Come on! There they go. They're right beside the dual carriageway. They never seem to bother the cows. But hopefully these are all in calf. Because if they're not, they're not getting another chance now. Full is out. We'll have to uh, see in about eight, nine weeks time, we'll get the scanner in. See uh, how well the balls did. Hey! Oh, we've mixed two groups, so they'll fight a bit. They're obviously two different groups of cows. Hey! Quick! Go on, get in there. So yeah, we've mixed the coal group with some that were with the bull. So there will be 10 in this group that aren't in carb. We didn't want to breed from them again. Right, bull number two. They've got two vehicles. That bloke with the camera. We had them all down at the gate and the, they just turned and went back again. Doesn't help last week them being TB tested because they think they're being put through the crush again to be jabbed, which is fair enough. We just want to eat the bull out if we can. And we've let them into a field with grass to try and get them home. Which is never ideal. Ah. <sighs> See how this goes. Right, we are winning. We got one ball there, one ball in the end bay of the shed just there. Need to hit the stock box onto the tractor which is there. Phil's just going to drive that one out, and then we can load him, let the other one out, and load him as well. That took far longer than it should have. They were just being a, a bunch of coos. Steady, steady up. Some boy Phil. Right, one ball loaded. They're quite good, the balls. They seem to just run up the ramps. I always carry a stick, because you just never know with balls. We don't actively go looking to hit them or anything, but they are quite good. They tend to think they're going somewhere better, so they run up. Like so. 
Oh, loaded! We are efficient. John's taking the cows back. Have you um, looked at my efficiency rating on John Deere yet? On the spray? No, I haven't. <laughs> Sheep. We had some escapade sheep this morning, so we just helped Rex get them across the road here, back to where he wants them. Got the e-bike, the Eliglide M1. Does the job for just nipping around the yard. I have got my helmet today as well, look. This is what all the best cyclists look like. Let's turn her on. Maximum power. We're away. Yes, the bike. This thing is ideal for just nipping sheep across the road and running between the farms. But uh, on to the next job. Right, next job, we will take some straw and silage over to the other farm at Rowden for fill. So I've put four bales of straw on the trailer. We've only got, is it 14 or 15 animals left over there, so we don't need a lot. So I'm going to get a few bales of silage and stick on the back as well. That'll keep him going for a little while. We um, obviously ran out of clam silage over there quite a while ago. Refilled the clams ready for next year. So now we're on to bales. Now we only have two bales left out of this pile that we're feeding. So I'll have to take two from another pile as well. Dabbing. Now we've got a pile of bales here which are green farm platform bales from, I think they're actually from two years ago those ones. But the platform bales can only be fed to platform cattle unless we are in some sort of dire forage emergency. Um, and then we'll feed them to whatever. Same with these, these are green farm platform bales from uh, last year. So yeah, they're 12 months old. And this pile here is odds and sods that we've bailed as and when. There's one there that's got a hole in, you can see it's rode out. So I'll probably take a couple from that row as well. Right, we got ourselves hooked on with the old Manitou. Put the lights in a minute. Then we took a strap over that, strap around the back bale. And we'll take that over to Rowden. Right, let's head to Rowden. Made it in one piece. Phil's just wanting to take a sample of the silage before we feed it, so I'll, uh, I'll whip the straw bales off quick whilst he's getting a bag. How do people do this one-handed? <laughs> Phil's chucking one of the bales straight in the wagon. They're a bit loose. The bottom bit fell off, but... Uh, He's got to put the bucket on anyway in a minute. We'll scoop that up and chuck it in, have a tidy up. Don't like making a mess. Feed that in gently. They need quite a while to chop these bales in the wagon. So you put that in there, he'll carry on unloading that. And uh, I'm gonna head up and see if the rushes we sprayed back along have died. Right, I'm now up in the field where I sprayed a load of rushes back along after we've taken our silage. Now they look healthy to me, other than the tips. So have I killed that? I... The tips look like they've been burnt, like they've taken the spray, but they're all still very green and healthy looking. So I don't know whether they've done it or not. I've never sprayed any rushes, so I don't really know what to look for. I was sort of hoping they'd look crispy, brown and shriveled up, but they don't. See, we've got rushes all the way along this patch. They certainly look stunted. This lot, look, this is more what I thought they would look like. See how that's going brown. Perhaps they just take a while to die. If anyone's got any experience with trying to kill rushes, let me know. We sprayed them with a chemical called easel, which is a herbicide, as well as some solar and 
Um, oh, there was one other chemical, it began with D, I don't think it was called. But anyway, that was like an adjuvant and a alcohol to sort of like break down the wax on the outside of the rushes. I've definitely stunted them, that's for sure. These guys look sick. They don't look very healthy. Why are those ones over there? I sprayed the whole lot. It's not like I missed bits. Perhaps they're just taking a while to die. That looks healthier down there. This lot over here certainly look... Yeah, they certainly don't look so healthy and the grass is coming up through them. There's a wet spot there. Now I find this sort of thing quite interesting. I sprayed whilst I was up here um, these docks. So there's a patch of docks behind me here. There's a drinking trough there. So once I'd finished spraying the rushes and I'd run out of chemical, I filled up with water from the drinking trough and I thought I'll just wash it out at the top of this field over all these docks and I'll see if it does anything. Well, some of these docks look quite healthy. They've got some bite marks in them. Whether we've got some dog beetles, should be good. So that one looks healthy. And then like a couple yards away, there's one that doesn't look quite so healthy. And then a couple yards away again, there's one that's been absolutely annihilated. Now that must be the spray, or was that aphids and whatever, but it's all curled up. Look at it, it's all shriveled and dead. But the others are all fine. I find that really weird. There's actually a nice bit of grass coming back here. Really heavy dew this morning as well. It'll do well for cutting it again. But uh, yeah. The plan is to get on top of the docks here. We've got quite a bad dock problem, especially on this half of the farm here. There's a lot of docks next door. So um, I just don't like dragging our massive sprayer around. I really want to change our sprayer. Um, it'd be something perhaps next spring we could hit really, really hard is get on top of all these docks because they aren't any good and they only multiply. The other field below, I know you can't see it very well on the camera, where the rushes are in that field, they certainly look brown where I sprayed them because I, I sprayed some and left others down there, which is interesting. And the bits I've sprayed look brown. Perhaps they are dying and I'm just trying to rush them on a bit. I don't know. Perhaps it takes a while. I've got to be patient. I've got to be patient. Here's something I didn't really expect to find. There's a ewe and a lamb on the middle of this track here. Now, I'm pretty sure they belong the far end of this track on the left. When I come along here just now, the gate was wide open and there was a, another lamb in the track. Don't ask me why the gate was open, I have no idea, but um, it was. So I shut the other lamb back in and we got six cattle at the end of the track here. I just thought I'd come and check them whilst I'm passing. And uh, I found these two, so I'm assuming they belong on the same plot. I've got to try and get them back down there, open the gate and get them in there. Sheep are just a nightmare. There's no two ways about it. I think we're missing two sheep out that field. I put that ewe and lamb back in and counted them. And it should be 20. I counted them three times. I got to 19 once and 18 twice. So uh, I'm just shutting a couple gates here that lead out onto the main road behind me. I can't find the ewe and the lamb and it could be anywhere. And what I really don't want is if it was to find its way onto the road and cause an accident. So I'm gonna shut these gates and then we better way head back and have a bit of a meeting and make a plan as to what we're going to do here. Wish us luck. Right, I've handed over the uh, sheep job to the sheep team. They've been and had a look around as well. We can't find the two that are missing, but the working theory is they're on one of the other plots. They've got under a gate or through the fence or something. Um, so they're going to sort that anyway. I've just come out to check the cows. So these are platform cattle on the permanent pasture platform also known as the greens. Oh boy. We all look quite happy this morning. They could do with a bit of fresh grass, but without the rain, we're not gonna get it. We keep getting these sort of really half-assed attempts at rain. It's like misty and sort of the air's damp, but it doesn't do any good. It's a bit of a shame, because I can see if it doesn't rain, we're gonna end up having to feed these, obviously. Which I don't really want to do. So Brad from Mason's has bought out a 6R150 for us to have a go with. I've just put all our maps on it and stuff and uh, got it all hooked onto the spreader. We're all ready to have a go with tomorrow. So I will show you more of this tractor in the next video. 
I'm going to end this one now. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you like the video, subscribe, so you're uh, up to date with all my new videos coming out. Merch dropping very soon, if not already. Um, but uh, you have to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and everything to find that out. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio. So I will show you more of this tractor in the next video. I'm going to end this one now. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you like the video, subscribe, so you're uh, up to date with all my new videos coming out. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio.